They viewed it as a big step in the right direction for the future potential of RFID devices. But personally, when I saw this story, and I know when you saw this story, as Christians, we know, we, instant, we probably instantly thought how sad it is that this type of technology will one day lead to the future, and, or the true mark of the beast prophesied in the Holy Bible. Worse, we probably also thought about the, the millions of people, much like Mr. Gasson here, who will deliberately accept the mark of the beast too, despite any health risks, let alone the eternal spiritual consequences, all in the name of a little convenience, a little food, a little shelter, all the creature comforts that they'll be allowed to buy and sell with that technology. Anyway, it was that story that prompted me to revisit nanotechnology after I felt that I hit that roadblock and try to dig a little deeper on any potential future connection with the, the mark of the beast. Again, I get that if, if I just st stop there, you might think, wait a minute, Jeff, I, I see where you're going with this, kind of, but you're telling me that that was the sole reason why you decided to, di decided to explore this uh, potential link? And that's a good question, and no, it, quite frankly, it's not, fortunately. Uh, actually, what sealed it for me was when I concluded that the RFID implants are nothing compared to nanobots. And furthermore, it was something that I read in Revelation that really stood out to me. Revelation 13, verse 15 says, He was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. That verse, for whatever reason, got me excited again about diving into this possible link the image of the beast. The image, right? Well, personally, I believe that, that that could be, could be a major clue for us in this kind of a study. Think about it. What happens when people watch, uh, when you're sitting at home, all the guys in the room who are married, when you're sitting at home with your wives watching a chick flick, what happens? Right? Or, or, or they see a Hallmark commercial, when, when we see a Hallmark commercial. Or for that matter, and on the flip side, the dark, the fleshly, the worldly side, when people watch pornography or violence, what happens? The images cause an actual and specific physiological response in the human body. There are actual chemical reactions that take place during that process. It's those chemical reactions, here's that word again, that bond us to such images, whether good or bad, and make us want to seek out similar images in the future more and more and more in an attempt to recreate those feelings and those reactions because they feel good. So for me, when I couple that knowledge with the knowledge that nanotechnology involves an artificially intelligent living creation capable of targeting specific cells and enzymes for a specific purpose, it just seemed too important, too relevant to ignore, and again, just knew that I had to try to explore this a little further and just, you know, uh, feel out this suspicion a little bit. And I'm glad I did too, because sure enough, my suspicions were confirmed. Remember that, uh, that University of Buffalo study I mentioned uh, earlier? Back in July, what a team of researchers at the University of Buffalo have discovered is truly alarming. On July 6, 2010, the team published a press release of their findings with the title, With Magnetic Nanoparticles, Scientists Remotely Control Neurons and Am Animal Behavior. <coughs> Clusters of heated magnetic nanoparticles targeted to cell membranes can remotely control ion channels, neurons, and even animal behavior, according to this paper published by University Buffalo uh, physicists in Nature Nanotechnology. Now, it doesn't take a doctorate to understand the implications here, does it? I mean, 
What if nanobots that had the capacity to control human minds were programmed to search out and attach themselves to key areas of the human brain? Such nanobots would be far too small to even be seen by the human eye, and people could become infected with these creatures without even knowing it. Hordes of these nanobots could be released into the atmosphere or in public areas and infect thousands or even millions, and nobody might even realize it. So you better believe that if governments could find a way to do this without the public without the public having any clue, they could find a way to turn nanotechnology into some kind of form of, of uh, cutting edge mind control without anybody having a clue. You better believe they're going to try to do it. Even if it's just in a, a, a military application, if they were to admit it. Again, that's obviously taking things to the ex extreme. I admit that, but it, it's certainly plausible. And that's why this is important for us to, to consider and think about. But what do we know about the, the mark of the beast? We know that people will willingly choose the mark of the beast and seal their fate in the process. So, again, although I wanted to put such a scenario out there for your consideration and it doesn't necessarily fit uh, with the case I'm trying to make, it does continue to lay the groundwork for the, the threat posed by such a uh, SciTech. Still, how about that nanotechnology shown to be able to control animal behavior? Okay, so if we were to think about some of the potential scenarios here, what would we come up with? Up at this point, I've, I've danced around my reasons for thinking that Nanotech could be used to fulfill the coming mark of the beast system. Plus, I've left out some critical components and explanations like what in the world do nanobots being able to change the human body's internal functions and responses to external stimuli have to do with the mark of the beast and what we know about it being a system used for buying and selling. With all the studies that I've done on pop culture's role in mass conditioning, predictive programming, that process, whatever you want to label it as. It, it probably won't surprise many of you to learn that for this next part, I drew a few things here and there that I came across last year in, uh, gosh, I think it was a, a short-lived comic book series that was gaining a lot of attention way back in 2005. Uh, it was called Testament by Douglas Rushkoff and Liam Sharp. Remember, nanotechnology is a computer-based life form that can communicate with the real world and with living organisms like animals and humans, as far as I understand it at this, uh, this point in time. So what does an AI program, an artificial intelligence program, nanotechnology, what does it all have to do with a global currency, a global economy, and the mark of the beast? Well, imagine a global currency as a living entity and totally under the, the control of one man. Think about it. Under, under such a, a uh, techno-utopia, we'd have an efficient and totally fair computer-driven society, or so we'll be told, and one that can be programmed to suit the agenda of the one who's in control of such SciTech will be sold the beast system by being told that it's, it's really no big deal because the whole world is made up of code anyway. To me, I, I just can't see Satan allowing something like nanotech to pass without attempting to hijack it and, and using it to deceive and destroy millions, assuming God allows him to. I just can't see him doing that. It would be... It would be a global economy based on virtual mana, which would be equally consistent with his schemes to mock and ridicule our Heavenly Father every single chance that he gets. It would be the promise of a nanotech-enabled virtual coinage. And you know, something I just thought of now from uh, 
Again, from uh, Derek Gilbert's presentation earlier, he mentioned Second Life. If I remember correctly, Second Life has allowed some people to actually make a living real cash transactions and they cash out and make real money. So again, this, this conditioning process to this virtual coinage, virtual uh, economic system, it's there. Plus the promise of a nanotech enabled virtual coinage, guess what, it can't be counterfeited, it can't be stolen. But it's so much more than that. It, it's an intelligent, it, it would be an intelligent currency an emergent network that can expand or contract to the needs of the moment. To the powers that be and to the lovers of money in this world, it makes sense because it would be a money finally worthy of the worship that they give it and the worship that it receives. So in that sense, such a reality could conceivably be the answer to the world's economic, energy, and hunger problems. But I want to I briefly go back to the whole RFID implant connection. Let's assume that one day in the near future, a majority of people do get implanted for whatever reason. Say it's not the mark of the beast, but, but out of convenience, you know, your child, uh, national security, whatever the case may be, however it's sold, let's just say that people go along with it for whatever reason. Here's why I think a virtual currency, thanks to the advances in nanotech, becomes even more sinister. Any nanotech-enabled virtual coinage is, of course, intended to be a paperless currency. Would there be a better way to promote such a concept than with the personal RFIDs already implanted into people? I mean, just think about the various rewards clubs that are in existence today. You could create an ad campaign for kids to use their embedded RFID chips as virtual coinage credit chips or a, a universal cash chip for a universal currency. Plus, it would even help you to get implants into those people who had refused, for whatever reason, to get the RFID implant up to that point. You could set up virtual coinage stations at retail outlets worldwide and encourage people to go there to one of these stations, get tagged with the RFID implant. Maybe, maybe, that's, the, maybe that's the slogan, get tagged. So they go to these stations, they get tagged with the RFID implant, and then upgrade your RFID device for points towards music downloads, uh, discounts uh, for other e-purchases. Maybe early adopters can even get special benefits too. I mean, why stop there, right? Mm 